need the mic on, sorry. Again, welcome everyone to the Economic, Tourism, and Cultural Development meeting, Thursday, May 18th. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, just need approval of agenda. Uh, approved by Ma Councillor McAleer, seconded by Councillor Thrill. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none. Approval of minutes from April 20th, 2023. Council McInerney, do you have a question? Yeah, no, I just wondered, um, <clears throat> is it, when when could I introduce an item for no business? Uh, number seven. Yeah. So wait till we get there? We're not that, the, no, when yeah. we get there, number yeah. seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I don't need? It needed to have another approval agenda. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay, my apologies. We're adding something to the agenda. Okay, so you're adding to it. Okay, so. Okay. We didn't move it, so go right ahead. Yeah, what would you like to add? Yeah, just um, like to uh, add an item um, uh, regarding the East Link Center and uh, George Matthews. Thank you. So, question for Sue then is this? When I get to number seven, new business, that is that gets a rise, put it at that time. Okay, thank you. And, uh, Chair? Yes. We have CADC here. There's an item I'd like to bring up about the representatives here as well. Okay. Is that before or after the presentation? After this presentation, and then there's an issue there that uh, they're responsible for. I would like to uh, like uh, put your mic on there, Chancellor Phil. There's an item I'd like to bring up there while while uh, senior representative from CADC is here. Okay. Great. Well, uh, that's at it. So, can I have approval of the minutes then? Councillor Tweel moved, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Any business arising from the minutes? Yes. Okay. Yes, Councilor there Tweel. is. Yeah. Um, last month, I brought up the. Uh, the issue of the status report for the position of economic development uh, manager. And I was looking for a status report at that particular time. Not sure where I have it is in the minutes, but it's there. I just read it. So, um, yeah. State of the state of the uh, status. I'm sorry, of the manager of economic development, tourism, culture position, as well as the cultural economic coordinator. Uh, they were both recently approved. So I'm looking. I'm looking for an update. Um, I know our acting managers here, but um, very uh, okay. Can very I ask? interested as to, to to where we're at now. This has been this has been another month. I know we're, if you look at the city's corporation, positions are being filled, and I'm wondering where we at in terms of uh, progress or lack thereof as to filling that, filling those positions. Yeah, we're advised that HR department was looking into it. But, uh, Sue, do you have any, anything to add to that? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair, through to Councillor Tweel. I believe I addressed this question at the last meeting that we have a staggered rollout of all of our new hires. And um, this position that you're asking about is in that staggered rollout. We're in the first rollout now, which is the May to July one, Councillor. And um, this position that you're inquiring about is in the second rollout. So it will happen sometime late summer, early fall. Uh, our, we have two factors requiring us to do a staggered rollout. One is the weight on the HR department to try to roll out 20 to 30 jobs all at once um, with the vetting and hiring and onboarding. The second piece is the budget because during the budget process we had to um, find about 400000 in savings in um, our budget cutting exercise to balance the budget. And by doing the staggering, we're able to 
um, mitigate the costs of having all of those positions on board right out of the gate at the beginning of the budget year. So those were the two main reasons why we did the staggered rollout and that position is in the second rollout. Okay, to a follow up question, thank you. Follow up question, so um, in terms of filling these position or that particular position of manager, so it's status quo in terms of filling the position, safe to say. Uh, Mr. Chair, through to the councillor, I'm not sure what you mean by status quo. Well, there's, um, is, there, is there any changes, is there any additions, any deletions? Will, will the position be the same as it always has been for the past number of years? Mr. Chairman, through to the councillor, this is a brand new position. So to compare it to anything preceding is not possible because it's a brand new position. There was never a manager in that department before. Um, Wayne, as you know, is in an acting capacity since okay. January in a brand new position. So there is no status quo to compare it to. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I didn't ask the question the right way. Will the responsibilities be the same or or being a new position, uh, that manager will oversee the entire department. Um, that means tourism, culture, uh, the tourism department, all of those, uh, all of those responsibilities and assignments. Mr. Chairman, through to count the counselor, there is a job profile under which the acting is following now. Okay. Um, it's too early for me to definitively say that that job profile will be exactly the same when we roll it out because we have a brand new CAO and she is reviewing jobs and job profiles before they actually go out the door to make sure they're aligned with the overall intent for each department rollout. So there may be some tweaking and fine tuning that happens with the profile. So I think right now it's too early to say definitively it'd be the exact same job description under which the acting manager is following right now. Uh, Chair, if you don't mind, one more, one more question. Um, maybe you can help me with this one. Um, the, I guess the intention of, of the CAO is to hire <clears throat> two or three directors. And if, and if I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but economic development will no longer be with this particular committee or or the uh, director will be responsible for planning and heritage and real estate and economic development. Will that director still be overseeing this committee or, or will the manage, ma manager of economic development be transferred to Another committee. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to follow this uh, this uh, sequence of events, and I'm trying to get a better understanding. Mr. Chair, through to the councillor. I think the questions you're asking now are more related to the overall governance piece and senior level um, organizational flow. We have an RFQ out right now to seek an external recruiter to hire two new directors. Part of that exercise will be to fine tune who those directors will, what, what their portfolio will include and who their direct reports will be. So that's part of the exercise that we're in now um, because the director positions are in this first rollout. So once we get directors uh, job descriptions more finely tuned, we'll know what that flow looks like as to who reports to whom. Um, right now as it stands, the uh, whole department reports to Director of Community Services, which is myself. Um, and I don't know at this point if that's going to change. Again, that's the prerogative of our CAO to uh, streamline that and, um, and do what needs to happen with regards to those reporting pieces. That's, her, that's part of her role and responsibility. Okay, you good? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pursue it. Thank you, Sue. All right, uh, item number six, uh, reports and discussions. We have a couple of gentlemen here from CADC to do a presentation. So, sorry, I, d I didn't catch your name at first there. So. Uh, Wade Arsenault. Wade, Mr. Arsenault. Okay, go right ahead. 
Okay, I'm assuming you're just looking for a, a bit of an update on CADC's current activities, um, what we're working on, is that is that correct? In general, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Okay, um, just a quick update on, on some of the things that we've done since, uh, as you know, for a long while there, we were, we were facing being wound up and uh, the powers that be decided that they weren't going to wind us up and they reconstituted us and, and since then we've been we've been quite busy. Uh, some of the projects we've undertaken in, in that time frame or since then have been uh, the new library uh, which is open and I think uh, deemed a great success by, by any and all who've had the opportunity to, uh, to spend some time there. Uh, we also did a new building for the uh, PEI BioAlliance in the Biopark. It's called a Biomanufacturing Incubator. It's meant to be uh, startup manufacturing, pilot scale manufacturing for firms coming out of research and development. Uh, that was completed uh, last year. Uh, we just completed a, an addition to Island Abbey Foods of seven and a half million dollar addition, which is about 38,000 square feet of new warehouse manufacturing and office space. Uh, in addition to the work that we did there, Island Abbey invested another $15 million in specialized equipment and, uh, and fit up on their end. Uh, we did a, a little update to the Peaks, Peaks Wharf Courtyard, which I'm sure you've all seen and uh, again has been, a, has been deemed a great success with, with lots of usage and has driven more, uh, more traffic to, uh, to Peaks Wharf which has brought its own issues with washrooms, but uh, along with our city partners and, uh, and the merchants down there, we have come up with a plan to, uh, to increase washroom space there in the short term um, with an eye towards uh, coming up with a long range plan uh, to further deal with that. Uh, we undertook a, an expansion from the Fitzroy Parkade, which was completed, um, waiting on finishing up the uh, facade improvement there on that as, as we speak. Uh, we did a um, province house historic district study which kind of took in several potential projects down there being some changes to um, um, to Sydney Street, uh, the legislature parking lot which is owned by the church, uh, some potential upgrades to Victoria Row as well as some of the work that's going to happen around the convention or the uh, Confederation Center as part of their uh, expansion plans so that report was complete um, and around the Harborside complex we we did undertake a lot of things that were deferred during our period of inactivity uh, we did a, a resurfacing of the access road down there and a rewaterproofing of the parkade uh, the parkade itself um, and we've just completed a, a wholesale renovation of our hallways and common areas um, with a couple of elevators to be replaced uh, this fall. Um, as part of that upgrade to Harborside, we're also looking at adding some, uh, some solar panels here uh, in the very near future. We have quotes, in, quotes done for that and we've awarded that contract. So currently what we're working on, um, uh, I don't know if you've heard the announcement uh, that the PEI BioAlliance is, is building a um, bioaccelerator building. Um, this will be a 70 to 80,000 square foot building. Uh, we've closed and awarded the architectural services contract for that. Um, the building will be, the budget on the building is $50 million plus a 15% contingency. Uh, included in that there will be about $8 million of equipment. Uh, we're looking to break ground on that in we're looking to do site work development on that this fall and, uh, and award the construction contract sometime around next February, March timeframe. Um, we're looking at some, currently looking at some improvements to the, uh, the Peaks Wharf parking lot. I, I know you're probably all aware that we had some challenges down there when we automated it with equipment not being particularly intuitive to, to use and leaving, resulting in some long lineups and frustrated folks trying to get out of there. So what we're doing is we're, we're putting all new equipment down there, uh, including two pay stations where you can, you can pay for your parking um, and then go to your car and, and exit, similar to what you would have at the airport. We're also adding a, another exit lane uh, out onto Prince Street to process people out of the lot faster. So we're hopeful that these improvements will decrease those wait times to get out of the lot and make it operate uh, 
much more efficiently. Uh, it's a fairly significant investment. It's over $100,000 in equipment, so we're hoping that's gonna yield some good results and decrease some frustration from folks down there. Um, Queen's Wharf, um, we, last year or the year before, we undertook a, uh, a structural analysis of that wharf with Harborside Engineering that essentially is points to the fact that that wharf essentially needs to be replaced. Um, and the price tag on that is not cheap. It's a $30 million, a $30 million job. We're currently, we're currently um, putting together a best practices mission to uh, St. John and to Halifax to go and talk to the folks there who have dealt with these wharf refurbishments and, and replacements and, and upgrades and reuses or repurposing of these wharfs to see what we can learn from them. Uh, included in the dele delegation there will be myself and uh, Aaron Hansen, our Director of Operations, as well as um, Scott Adams from the city. And we're looking to have somebody from the province's um, um, Department of Transportation companies as well, along with uh, Mike Cocker and the CEO of the, uh, of the Harbor Authority. So we may not have to reinvent the wheel here. Let's see what we can learn as to re repair practices that they've used on some of their wharfs, particularly in Halifax, Halifax Dartmouth and um, Lunenburg wharfs. Um, a lot of them are owned by Develop Nova Scotia. I guess it's Build Nova Scotia now. So they've, they've dealt with these things um, so let's see what we can learn from them. Uh, the other piece of work that we're, we're working on now is, as you know, the uh, Water Street um, diversion is happening uh, this year uh, with a new intersection at uh, Grafton Street and then the, the roadway itself being built after the Shellfish Festival this fall. So now that that piece of work is happening, uh, in addition to the, the road work that the city is doing, uh, the province will do an upgrade to the intersection at the bridge uh, next spring, which would then result in Water Street being diverted and the lower part of that being up for potential redevelopment. Uh, in the last couple of years, we had, had completed a master planning exercise with uh, Fathom Studios um, for upgrades to the events grounds. Um, and that, that work was done, but now what we're, what we're looking to do in consultation with both the city and the province, uh, we're looking at getting Fathom Studios to come back. And now that the roadway piece is done, we, we're gonna need to do some upgrades to the asphalt service to be able to handle the Shellfish Festival because, because of the way the road work, roadway is going in. Um, other things that were kind of identified in the, the Fathom Master Plan one of them was the opportunity for a, a public boat launch slip, which is, does not currently exist in Charlottetown and has long been a sought after piece of infrastructure. So this gives us a very good place to do that uh, adjacent to where the current maritime electric pumping station is, which is in the process of being decommissioned and will be, will be torn down. You know, if you wanna launch your boat, it'll be a place you can do that. Uh, also be parking there so you could leave your boat and trailer while you're out on the water for the day, which is a problem now if you launch at the Yacht Club or Peaks, there's really no place to leave your, your boat and trailer, your truck and trailer, so you have to remove it somewhere else. So that's just one of the things that we're looking to sort of fine tune with Fathom. And over the years, we've kind of been looking at the events grounds to see how we can drive more usage um, both from an events perspective and from a local's perspective. And the Eastern Gateway Master Plan, which was done in around 2010, kind of identified Charlottetown having, um, having really two major parks that flank the city, one being Victoria Park to the west and then the events grounds to the east. So the thought process on it is, is twofold. It's how do we make this more park-like so that people will use it as a park? when there's not events happening there? And how do we do changes to the events grounds that make it useful for smaller events? Because right now it's a wide open space. You have a small event there, you know, 500 people, 1,000 people, and they look lost on the site because it's so big. So how do we do with a combination of planting and other things, make it both more park-like, but also create areas where you could have a smaller, uh, more intimate event 
which would encourage uh, more of these smaller events to, to use the grounds rather than using Confederation Landing Park, which was never really set up for events. So at the end of the day, we'd like to have a, an events grounds, which is really a city park with the infrastructure to hold events, both large and small. So those are some of the, uh, the, the larger things we're working on. There's always smaller housekeeping items that, uh, that, we, that we're, we're doing on an ongoing basis. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments on, on what I've just presented to you. Thank you, Mr. Arshno. That was a great presentation. Uh, safe to say CADC has been very busy with uh, projects going on through its, uh, the city. So you had mentioned, is it next spring that you said that they'll be closing off Water Street to the gateway there? Is that the plan? It's, it's still in the planning process at the moment. Sorry. Yeah, it's still in the planning process, but we would assume that the province would want to keep the current Water Street open uh, until they complete uh, work at the intersection at the bridge at such time as they would look, they would seek to close it then. Um, their plan, as far as I understand it, is to do that bridge intersection next spring. Okay, okay. and one more question. Uh, on your boat launch, when that gets built, proposed, will there be um, a section set aside like for kayakers or canoers to safely get set in and launch? Again, as part of the, uh, the Fathom master planning process so that was done, it was contemplated that would, it would be an ideal spot for a rowing club or a kayak launch, et cetera. Currently that operates out of the Yacht Club, which is also a, a pretty good spot, but they would have certainly room for more expanded facilities. Um, the rowing club has been looking for some sort of a structure where they can shelter their boats when they're not in the water, uh, so that it might be an ideal um, time to look at that as part of as part of this upgraded planning for the events grounds. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Macle. I think he was first. I think. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fine. Councillor McAleer, go ahead. Hey, wait. Th thanks for your update. Um, I was just curious, uh, by way of understanding, like the the um, when you mentioned the 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 Bio Alliance and and Island Abbey. You know, when I think of CADC, I tend to think of more downtown. But so, so would CADC, like in those um, in the Bio Alliance and Island Abbey, would that be CADC owned real estate, or are you just? You, oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just to give you a little uh, a background on, on why we end up owning uh, those types of facilities, is one of the one of the things that CADC brings to the table is the ability to leverage non-repayable federal grants. Um, so there is a lot of grant money in in those buildings to start, and as part of that, there's a control period where we're required to re retain ownership for a certain period of time. It varies depending on depending on the project. But we got involved in those simply as because we can we can get that money and and other organizations are not eligible for it. And and just um, so just uh, I was glad to hear in your remarks in terms of the Queen Street Wharf. So there is it sounds like there is collaboration with the, your CADC and the Port Authority. And and is that um, <laughs> put you on the spot? Is that is that uh, good chemistry? Like you're not. Uh, Two different tunnels, or uh, did, what's what's your um, assessment of that relationship? Mine. I think we have a good relationship with the Harbor Authority. We work collaboratively in a number of things. Um, they certainly would have interest in the Queen's Wharf. Um, they currently uh, look after any ships that dock there. Um, and I think they would look at it as maybe a, a secondary cruise ship berthing space where you could put some of the smaller ships on. Um, Coast Guard still comes in there from time to time. So there is still a need for use as a wharf and that would certainly fall to the, uh, to the Harbor Authority as a recognized expert on that. Okay. Councillor Twill. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for your presentation, Wade. 
update. Um, you talked about the event grounds. Um, recently, I suggested, having had the opportunity to discuss it with, with the Parks Committee, or Parks Management, recently I suggested the, uh, the pavilion be relocated to the event grounds. And I bring that up for a variety of reasons. One is, uh, we have a lot of musicians and artists, um, entertainers, and you talked about them in your remarks, you know, from a local perspective, where they truly don't have a place to play. I, I don't see uh, musicians, regardless of what kind of music it is, uh, being played in Victoria Park for, for a number of reasons. We have a Victoria Park bylaw, which is uh, pretty strict, has uh, strict covenants in the bylaw. Um, there's not a whole lot of room there <clears throat> in, terms of, in terms of parking. That's a major challenge. And if you look at the event grounds, it's been sitting there. And I look at the pavilion, I look at the event grounds, and both are underutilized. I've, I've had some uh, preliminary discussions, discussions with musicians, uh, local artists, uh, that truly do not have a place of their own where they can, uh, where they can perform. And, you know, we got the event grounds just sitting there. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really a shame it's not being utilized. And I, I would like to uh, begin the discussions to have some type of a venue in terms of staging. All the infrastructures there, as you know, uh, everything from electricity to any other utilities that are truly required <clears throat> in order to facilitate uh, local or, or, or bigger events. I would like to start with, with local events being held in our city. Obviously, CADC would play an indispensable role in, in making that happen. I'd like to see the city of Charlottetown partnering with CADC. We are a shareholder, uh, but I, I would like to... Uh, uh, begin that, begin that, uh, you know, begin begin that development. Development. Um, uh, like I said, I've had a number of discussions with uh, local artists here in the city. Uh, they don't have a place. They don't have a place to play. And when I talk about a place to play, I'm talking about six and seven days a week. You know, one night it could be rock music. It could be the Confederation Choir. We could also partner with Holland College. And their music program, they have some terrific uh, young artists that are performing throughout different venues in our city. But I think the time has come to, to have a facility um, that's set up for our local musicians and artists and entertainers so that there's predictability, there's consistency, they have a place to play. Uh, they can do the bookings either through CADC or, or through the city or whatever arrangement you you know the, that that would be required to set that up, but I think it's 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 time now to utilize that facility. It's 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 a shame it's not being utilized. I was down there a couple of times. I walked the whole every square footage of that facility. It's a nice facility, it really is, but but it's time to to put it to use. So um, I I'd like to initiate that uh, whether it's relocating the pavilion uh, to, to the facility down at, uh, down at the event grounds or, you know, that's just an option. Um, but I know Victoria Park and I know that people feel very strongly about Victoria Park. That's why we have a bylaw, um, you know, which prevents a lot of the type of entertainment that I'm referring to. And, and I, 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 I would like to start that process. I really would. Okay. Uh, well, a little background on on why there's not any stage infrastructure at the events grounds, and and that was a purposeful uh, decision that was taken when the when the grounds were originally created, because you really don't know what size events you're going to be dealing with, and you really don't know how it would be laid out on the site. So to build fixed infrastructure um, is you're really limiting what the site can be. Um, 
I think what you're talking about in trying to drive more uses to the events grounds, I think that the, uh, the changes that we're looking to make there are going to have that intent uh, and, or that effect. And you will see more people using it on a daily basis, just like they would use Victoria Park uh, for recreation or whatever. And that's really what we're intending to do there. Is there a possibility of adding a small performance area such as the pavilion? There's, there's a number of places you could do something like that. Um, it really wouldn't be up to us um, to say we're gonna move your pavilion. You would have to come to us and say, hey, we think we'd like to move this pavilion and would you guys entertain it on the site? And I think the answer to that would be, would be we would certainly look at it um, without a doubt. Um, you know, in terms of um, event creation, uh, CADC is not really in the event creation or event operation business, and I'm not so sure that we, there's lots of organizations that do that work, and I don't think we need to insert ourselves in, in, that, uh, in that side of it. We can certainly provide infrastructure uh, for those types of things, and, and that's, what we, uh, that's what we try to do. Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, so um, if, if the city did approach CADC, uh, in terms of you know working on a plan, and like you said, there is some, there is there's uh, some, there's a plan there now. But what I'd like to do is expedite that plan. Wait, I'd like to exp expedite that plan, and you know evaluate what the options are. Uh, like to open up uh, consultation with their local musicians. Uh, I want them to be involved too. Uh, like I said, I've had some discussions with them. They're very, very interested. interested. Uh, and I'll reiterate what I said earlier. They do not have a place where they truly can call their own and where they know that, well, I can, you know, the, the facility down at the event grounds could be booked, uh, you know, Tuesday night or Wednesday night. That facility should be going six and seven days a week. And, and it's a great facility, and it's a real tr shame that it's not being utilized and I think once we get people in the habit of using it, it can be a real, you know, a real, um, you know, I, th I think it can be a real asset to the city. And, and, and again, I'm thinking about the local artists. Um, it's Victoria Park, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is very limited in what it can do in terms of providing, you know, a venue uh, for that type of entertainment. It's very, it's very, very limited. And I know there's a lot of frustration in, in the artists, musicians, and, and local entertainers. I know there's a lot of frustration. So I want to work on a plan that will help facilitate that. All right. So, yes. all right. Thank you. So that'll get initiated yeah. and get going. You want to respond? Just make uh, one follow up comment to that. Um, like, anytime the city comes to us with, any kind of request, whether it's that type of request or or whatever it may be, we enter we you know we weigh it and we take it through our board and committee structure and we figure out if there's a role or there's not a role for. So we would we would entertain any requests from the city, whether it's that or or anything else. Mr. Chair, thank you, yeah, Mr. Brown. Apologize. You're I some apologize trees for, for being late. So. For being late, I was at the Arbor Day festivities at Victoria Park. And a great day for elementary students here in Charlottetown, um, enjoying the, the green space, the open space out of Courier Park. But in terms of uh, procedure, um, Mr. Ersno, this issue that, we're, that, that, that was just discussed, that has to go through the committees first. And um, I'm just, you know, that's, it should have went to that committee first because I sit on the, all the committees. So now the members of the Parks Recreation Le Leisure Standing Committee are going to find out about this through uh, YouTube. So I apologize that, you know, we have to follow procedure, and procedure would be to go through the appropriate committee. So any request that would be made to CADC on this issue would first go through that Standing Committee, Parks Recreation Leisure, might come back here, but it will ultimately go to Council. So. Um, you know, whatever timeline we're looking at, uh, that will be determined by the committee processes that are in place. So I just want to keep that in mind. And I understand CADC is a very 
willing partner with the city of Charlottetown dating back to 1974 when this whole idea began as a revitalization, uh, restoration of old Charlottetown, Great George Street, Water Street, Sydney Street, Richmond Street, and now you've extended out to Summerside, Montague, well, I shouldn't say Montague, but Stratford and the West Royal Industrial Park. Some of the real projects that I'm looking at is what's the update on the Charlottetown Library Learning Center? Are you the, just trying to clarify, I know you were the project manager, CADC was the project manager. What's the responsibility of CADC going forward? Uh, CADC actually owns the facility. Um, we don't have anything to do with the day-to-day -day operations beyond repairs and maintenance. Uh, so that's, that's really our role at this point in time. The operations uh, would fall to the uh, library staff. I'm assuming library staff would be under the responsibility of the provincial government? Okay, so just combining that with the Heritage District proposal that was presented a couple of months ago through Phantom, Phantom uh, Studios. Uh, there was a presentation at the Charlottetown Library Learning Center. Um, I know that the Confed Center is looking at <clears throat> what a $68 million restoration of the center. You know, big news. I know with Steve Bellamy, he's very, you know, focused on getting the funding from the federal government, the provincial government, and has made a request to us. Um, so, how do you plan to combine the Heritage District proposal with the Confederation Center project and the just the closing up of Mr. Chair, the closing up. Hopefully by next year we'll have the new province house, historic province house, opened and available to the public. Can you just give us a little bit of where you're going with that, or does the board has the board got to that point yet? Um, well, until such time as somebody comes to us and says, "Can we implement some of the things that were discussed in the province house historic district?" Um, we really wouldn't be undertaking any particular plans. I will say with the level of work that uh, the Confederation Center is planning, a lot of that is on Richmond Street, repurposing the old library space. There's actually some additions to that which come right out to Richmond Street. Uh, they're looking at a large addition up on the promenade outside the entrance to the old library. Uh, so that will be a lot of work. And one of the things that was sort of contemplated in the the Province House Historic District study was maybe some improvements to uh, Vic Row, um, which has been a great success for the city, I believe, but some changes to, you know, um, curbless streets and potentially rerouting sidewalks instead of going right through the seating of a restaurant to take it out around, out around that seating. But I wouldn't see doing any of that work until such time as the Confederation Center is well advanced in, in their additions to, uh, to Richmond Street because there's going to be a, a massive disruption when that happens and uh, they may be into some work in the street as well. So it would be a shame to do a bunch of improvements to Vic Row uh, prior to that when a bunch of it may get torn back up again. So, so Mr. Harrison, my question is, is CADC, is there an opportunity for the, the board, the administration, to reach out to the Confederation Center, Parks Canada, to get all of the three groups on the same page on what kind of development we're looking at for that district? Um, if you look at Halifax, the whole waterfront has been redeveloped with partnerships working together. So I'm just trying to find who will be the uh, the conduit. Not I shouldn't say the conduit. Who will be the sort of the facilitator to bring those groups together. Is that something CADC could initiate? I'm, I'm just trying to ensure that we work together so that we can see a, a great project for the, for the dizzy block, Charlottetown, downtown Charlottetown area come to fruition. Well, certainly the, uh, the Hillsborough Historic District study was a collaborative effort with, with all the individual stakeholders to figure out the whole idea was to, if we're all gonna, if we're gonna do four or five separate projects down there, well, let's kind of try to complete them with the same look and feel. Um, so it's a cohesive 
um, block and not everybody with their own ideas as to what it should look like. In terms of the province house uh, landscaping, um, Parks Canada has indicated that they will do that themselves and they really don't want any collaboration. <laughs> so they will carry that out as part of their work. Um, yeah, so we've really, we've really, to answer your question, uh, Mr. Mayor, we've really already done those, those sorts of consultations and if we were to be requested to undertake any of those pieces of work, there would be further collaborations with, with the immediate stakeholders in the area. Thank you. Uh, you have a question? Okay, one more question, Mr. McAleer. So on, on your point there, um, Parks Canada not interested in, in collaboration, would it, I'm way out of my element, but wouldn't it, to me, then it almost, doesn't it almost put, put you in a spot where you have to see them complete what they're doing before you can get to the next stages in that whole thing that uh, your worship's talking about? Um, I think their intent right now, from my understanding, is they're going to put the the landscaping back to what it was prior to the uh, renovation. So it'll go back to what it was. Uh, any improvements beyond that, I don't think that they have any um, appetite to to change anything. Um, yeah, that's where that sits right now. All right, Councillor Tweel, one more question. Yeah, just to We're respond to, to the up. mayor, uh, I'm very well aware that it starts at Parks and Recreation. Uh, Mr. Arsenal here talked about the event ground, so I took the opportunity to, to bring that up. I wanted to bring that up since he was here, and I did say that, uh, you know, it, it, uh, I didn't bring it yet to, to Parks and Rec, but so I'm very well aware it has to go to Parks and Rec and start there, and it does include this committee because Mr. Long here is responsible for events. So I saw this as an opportunity. So I understand the, uh, what the procedure is and the process in terms of what committee and what standing committee it goes to. I don't think you were here for that because you were late down at Arbor Day. So I, I did say that in my remarks. No, I, I was here for your remarks. And you know what, Mr. Councillor Twill, I'm not gonna get into an argument here in front of these people yeah. or on that live stream. There is processes. You've been here yeah, since 1990. No, let me finish. You've been here since 1996. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. There's process. 94. So what I'm saying to you and what I've said to you many times, there is a process that you have to follow. You don't make uh, uh, re recommendations or suggestions, whatever, whatever way it's brought up, in a, in a, and it's another committee that's not responsible for that uh, facility out there at Victoria Park. But Mr. Mr. Chair, okay. instead of yeah. this back and forth, I think I we understand that it has to go back to Parks and, and Recreation. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, I do have, that. I do I have, that. no, I have some follow-up questions for the, the board here, CADC, yeah. that relate to the city of Charlottetown, not just to one part, okay? Can I just ask them, Mr. Chair? Just a couple Question more questions. To, to Mr. Arsenal? Mr. Arsenal, yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Arsenal, just talking about the Queen Street, uh, Queen Street War, um, I know that we, with the city, are having some uh, dealings with the First Nations regarding transfer of land. Is that not the issue at uh, at uh, the Queen Street Wharf? No, the um, the First Nations consultations were carried out on that piece of property when we did the convention center, so that has been that has already been dealt with. And Mr. Chair, this is just part of my second question. When I look at MECL, the generating plant that's at the end of uh, Cumberland Street, that will be coming down within the next year, so. That will create more space down there. Um, are we CADC working with MECL just to find out what are their future plans? I know they want to add more generati generating power to their plant, but are you aware of what we could look at in as part of that Eastern Gateway plan? I'm not aware that they're looking to divest of any of that property. Um, they're still going to be a very active site. They're currently adding a second turbine generator there. There will still be the fuel tanks there. Really what's coming down is the, is the big building, the smokestacks and the pump house uh, right on the water. Uh, they are adding actually another building there as we speak, there's a building going up. So it will still be a, an active yard. Um, while there may be small 
parcels that, that may be able to be developed, um, I would say it's probably a little bit premature to be, to be discussing those now. No, I'm not trying to discuss them. I'm just trying to make sure that we're, again, keeping in touch with our partners, like the Province House Historic uh, District Project. It's just the collaboration, continue, uh, the continuing of communication. No, I, I'm not trying to say that CADC is going to walk in there and start developing some of that properties, uh, or MECL properties, or the properties owned by the Province House Parks Canada, or the Confederation Centre. Again, it's, it's keeping, you know, staying outside of our silos, working together because a lot of great potential for this downtown area with the Confederation Centre, Province House, uh, the Queen's Wharf, the potential development of the Queen's Wharf, uh, MECL, the Eastern Gateway Plant, uh, Eastern Gateway Plant. So we have a lot of great things happening that are just coming together. It's just that we have to ensure that the communication, not about taking over what they own or what they, um, what they um, have within their, within their mandate to operate as an uh, electrical generating plant or an arts and cultural center or businesses on Victoria Row. It's just that collaboration we have to keep uh, open, transparent, and accountable. And that leads me to my last point on the Queen Street uh, Parkade. Uh, I know we've been discussing that over the last number of years. Um, like, we're trying to work with other partners. Hopefully you'll stay at the table to make sure that we have that uh, professional corporate history going forward. Is that something that I can just end on? Mr. Chair? Okay. Respond. I agree with your points uh, on collaboration and keeping the lines of communication open and we try to do that with uh, with all the stakeholders around town on these various uh, pieces of property thank okay. you all right thank you very much for your presentation and uh, a lot of uh, discussion came out of that so appreciate it i guess i'll apologize for having to see some of this arguing but we'll figure that out and somebody will be back with you so, thank you. Yes. Was that uh, Councillor Twill when the item that we added to the agenda that you want to discuss? That was, that was yeah. It was it was about it. information exchange. Okay. And so. and it was good that it was Wade here. I appreciate you being here, Wade, and appreciated the discussion. It's always good to have information exchange. I don't see any harm in that. That's our responsibility. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation uh, to come and speak in front of you, and I'm happy to do that anytime you wish. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, 6B, festivals and major events. Mr. Long. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, this particular item is simply information uh, sharing, no action required of the committee. Um, it's two uh, annual reports from the 2022 uh, overlay into 2023 uh, seasons with respect to festivals and major events Canada fame and the International Association of Events uh, host, IAEH. Uh, the City of Charlton has strong partnerships with both of these organizations. Uh, and we work collaboratively with them on an ongoing basis. In fact, uh, the mayor writes lots of um, letters and correspondence at the request of these organizations to uh, federal members um, in parliament with respect to lobbying for funding for the festivals and events sector as we recover through the, uh, the pandemic. And that's why we're sharing these reports with you today. The committee uh, always has found good um, information within this report. So I encourage you when you have time uh, to look at some of the highlights given the impacts they have on our destination, not only through the municipality, but through our partnership with Event Atlantic and other partners. So information sharing only. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Long? Okay, thank you. And 6C, Mr. Long again, the Canada tree. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, this is also uh, information sharing, no action of the committee um, required. Um, our staff has been working uh, closely with uh, a number of partners um, 
through the Guild with respect to uh, the display of the Canada tree on the uh, waterfront this coming um, season. There's an overview in your package of this particular um, project. We want to ensure that the committee was kept up to speed on this uh, item. The Canada tree has been around for uh, some time um, now. It's uh, an amazing piece of art. It will be uh, housed on the waterfront on the corner of Confederation Landing Park, uh, closest um, to Lower uh, Prince Street and Founders Hall. Uh, there's information, as I indicated, in your package. There's also some photos of the, uh, the tree itself. And again, information sharing, and uh, hope that you can have the opportunity to come down and uh, view the tree when it is um, erected from June 28th to July 17th. So it's coming at the end of June. Is this the same tree that was here, you indicated, over 20 years ago? It, it is. Be. It is. <laughs> it's traveled. It has traveled. Any other questions on the Canada tree? I, could I just ask uh, Mr. Long, Wayne, um, the funding for the Canada tree, is that coming from funding a national endowment or is it coming from the Aspen family? What's the uh, financial backing or arrangement for carrying this forward? Yeah, um, through the uh, chair, your worship, um, it's my understanding that this particular project, as you indicated, the Aspen family has certainly been involved from the, uh, the get-go. Uh, they've been in working collaboratively with both the provincial and federal governments with respect to this particular project. Um, the City of Charlottetown does not have a financial contribution invested um, into the uh, project other than services in kind and facilitating through our um, culture and economic coordinator. So just a quick follow-up, Mr. Chair, if I could. It's about the... Uh uh, just the long-term plan. Or, or, I know right now it was in storage for many years, as you indicated, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, that if this was the same tree, yes, it's been out of public view for some time, and I'm hoping, my hope is that it will be, finds a place that we can show it forever a day. So are you looking at, uh, again, through the chair to Mr. Long, are, are we looking at, future plans with future partners or other partners? Um, through the uh, Chair, Your Worship, this particular project, the city is simply facilitating the display of the tree in, in this instance. Um, that is the city's only involvement. Um, Mr. Kevin McNeil, who is a family friend of uh, the Aspens, is heavily involved through the, the Guild. It's a cultural uh, related project, and I believe that they do have other plans that they're considering. I, I can't speak to those because I don't have the, uh, the information. I can only speak to the uh, display of the tree on the Charlottetown waterfront this summer. Okay, no other questions? Any new business? Mr. McAleer? Yeah, you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just um, would like to uh, raise the, the, the idea of the East Link Center and uh, George Matthews. Um, I, I was, wanted to suggest um, if it's uh, the committee agreed um, to have uh, George Matthews come in to talk to uh, our committee about the uh, East Link Center and just uh, uh, some of his um, some of his views, uh, as uh, as you, some council knows, uh, George was recently uh, appointed, I believe, to the board of uh, of the East Link Center. Uh, I had the uh, good fortune to uh, meet uh, George Matthews when I was campaigning in his neighborhood, and um, have had uh, different discussions with him. And uh, he's just got a great passion for Charlottetown, uh, the city, uh, the East Link Center. Uh, he's got some pretty, uh, pretty passionate views and what he thinks uh, that kind of a facility kind of needs and what it, what we should be maybe thinking about going forward. And again, that'd be that'd be only his views, but um, I think there'd be value in the committee hearing hearing his message in terms of uh, in terms of the East Link Center and. Uh, uh, as a as a as a source of information for perhaps uh, decisions and direction and going forward as to how the city may be uh, able to work with the East Link Center in terms of its uh, you know uh, programming uh, uh, physical space uh, the whole thing so 
just uh, want to know if there's any agreement. Uh, I know, I believe Wayne Long is, knows George well. Uh, he could maybe speak to uh, George's, uh, uh, George personally, and then probably Councilor Tweedle, and your worship probably uh, know the, uh, George as well. But Mr. Just, Mr. Chair, just on a point of order. Um, yep, I'm just on a point of order. It's, uh, Councilor Mackler, I think if we're like, like CADC, we invited them in. Mm -hmm. We could invite the East Link or the, I think it's referred to as, as the Charlottetown, C Charlottetown Civic uh, Management Inc. Inc. Yeah. Board in, and, and Mr. Matthews or whatever members wanted to come in, could come in. I think that's a good idea as a board, right, uh, Mr. Chair? I'm just asking you yeah, for your guidance. No, I agree, and we follow the procedures and protocol, however the committee works. So I, I assume that's left up to you, Wayne, to invite the people? Or? Yeah, Mr. Chair, we, we have an ongoing list of stakeholders and partners who we would traditionally invite to uh, to this committee. We can certainly invite the East Link Center um, board in, although a good portion of the work that happens with the East Link Center happens here. Just so the committee is aware, under our terms of reference, East Link Center does fall to the to the Finance Audit and Tendering Committee, uh, although a good portion of the work happens here. So we could certainly extend an invitation to the to the board to talk about the work that's happening at East Link Center and ensure that Mr. Matthews uh, is a part of that discussion. I think what the councillor is referring to is the, the vision and passion of Mr. Matthews having traveled the world and been around to a number of sport and entertainment um, locations. He's, he's pretty passionate about um, contributing to the efforts to uprise East Link Center collectively with with the board so we can ensure that he is a part of uh, the board when we in invite that and I work with um, our admin support to execute those invitations. Would that be an invite that should come to the finance committee then since the center falls more under them than us? The finance committee bring them into for a presentation? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, they do fall to the uh, Responsibility Finance Committee. Most of those discussions are around finances and, and business operations. There is a little bit of an overlay um, in terms of what happens at East Link Center because it's a sport and entertainment center, essentially. So a lot of the work that's happening there is relative to this committee, and the number of events that they host are secured uh, through the efforts of the City of Charlottetown's team. Thank you for that. Anything else, Councilor Meckler? No, that's it. Thank you. Just, Mr. Chair, just okay. again, on, on that, we could do a joint uh, meeting of the two standing committees. Again, everybody wants to work outside the silos, so this is an opportunity where yourself and the Chair of uh, Finance Administration, Councillor McAleer, could bring, bring, those, bring the, the board in to give a, a presentation to the joint uh, committees, if that's okay with you, because as you know, uh, Councillor McAleer sits on finance, sits on this committee. Um, yep. Yeah, I think it'd be a great way to get their views. Okay, no, sounds good. We'll uh, we'll have that discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Motion for adjournment. Mr. Brown. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. McAleer. Second it. Thank you very much. One o'clock.